Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a problem with derivatives. We have 2 times f of sine x plus f of cosine x equals x. And then for this function that satisfies this equation, we're going to find f prime of x. So in other words, we don't have an explicit expression for f of x, but we're going to differentiate it. And to be able to do that, obviously, you can use implicit differentiation. You can differentiate both sides, but that's going to give you two different things. How do you deal with that? Let's go ahead and take a look. One of the ideas is also for solving f of x, right? How do you find f of x from here and then differentiate it? Or is there a way to find the derivative without finding f of x? Those are good questions, something to think about. Anyways, let's get started. First of all, since I have sine x and cosine x at the same time, I'm going to use a substitution. And substitution is helpful, especially when you have integrals that contain sine and cosine both. This substitution is very helpful too. But I'm going to replace x with pi over 2 minus x. As you know, or you should know if you studied a little bit of trigonometry, sine x and cosine x are obviously co-functions, right? And what they do is when two angles add up to 90 degrees, then they're called complementary. So we can use complementary angles to turn sine into cosine or vice versa. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to replace x with pi over 2 minus x. That's going to give us 2f of sine pi over 2 minus x. Actually, instead of writing it that way, let me go ahead and do it this way. I think this is better. What happens if x is replaced with that. What happens to sine x? Let's go ahead and find out. So sine x becomes sine pi over x. So in other words, sine x is going to turn into, not, they're not equal obviously, sine pi over 2 minus x. And then this becomes cosine x. Because notice that pi over 2 minus x and x are complementary. So this identity is established. And when you do this with cosine x, like replacing the x in cosine x with pi over 2 minus x, you're going to get cosine of pi over 2 minus x, and that's going to turn into sine x. So when we do these replacements, we're going to get the following. 2 times f sine pi over 2 minus x, which is cosine x, and then plus f of cosine pi over 2 minus x, which is sine x. And of course, you have to make the replacements on both sides, x is going to be replaced with pi over 2 minus x on the right hand side, so we're going to get pi over 2 minus x. Okay, let's go ahead and fix this weird writing, 2f of cosine x. What is the original equation? It is 2f of sine x plus f of cosine x equals x. Remember, the original equation turned into something like this when we replace x with pi over 2 minus x. So what happened was sine x and cosine x basically switch roles. Now we got a system of equations in two variables. So we can solve for one of the variables. Let's go ahead and eliminate f of sine x. So to eliminate f of sine x, I'm going to go ahead and multiply the first equation by negative or actually, let's do f of cosine x. Let's multiply the second equation by negative 2, everything. And that's going to give us the following. Negative 4 f of sine x minus 2 f of cosine x equals negative 2x. And then the first equation, so I modify the second one. And this is the first equation, let's say. This is the second one. And now I'm going to get 2 f of cosine x plus f of sine x equals pi over 2 minus x. Now let's go ahead and add these equations. That cancels out the 2f of cosine x, leaving us with negative 3f of sine x equals pi over 2 minus 3x. Right? Let's go ahead and divide everything by negative 3. We get f of sine x. When you multiply by negative 1, it's going to flip and then divide by 3, you're going to get x minus pi over 6. 
So that's f of sine x. We're pretty close. We're almost there. We just need f of x. So how do you get f of x from here? We got to use the inverse function. So we're going to replace x with sine inverse of x or arc sine x. Some people call it arc sine. Some people call it sine inverse. It's the same thing. But sine to the power negative 1, does, that doesn't mean reciprocal. It's not 1 over sine x, okay? And when you do that, you're going to get f of x because when you replace x with sine inverse, you're going to get x. And on the right-hand side, you're going to get arc sine x minus pi over 6. So we got f of x, which is nice. We solved for f of x. Now let's go ahead and find the derivative. If you just differentiate it, hopefully you remember this. How do you differentiate arc sine x? It is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now, if you don't know how to differentiate it, you can look at the following. Let me go ahead and quickly talk about that. So suppose y equals arc sine x, which means x equals sine y. So suppose you don't know how to differentiate this. In other words, we are trying to find dy over dx, but we don't know what it is. Okay? Let's go ahead and differentiate both sides here. But instead of differentiating x with respect to x, because that will be 1, we can uh, we can differentiate both sides with respect to y because x is a function of y. So what is dx over dy, right? Well, x, dx over dy is just going to be cosine y multiplied by y prime, right? But what is this, right? How do you, you know, simplify this? Or how do you go from this one to dy over dx? You can basically just... Um, you know, actually we don't need dy prime because y prime is 1. So dx over dy is cosine y. How do you go to dy over dx? You just flip it. So from here, dy over dx becomes 1 over cosine y. But what is 1 over cosine y? We definitely want to write this in terms of x because that's our goal because y is a function of x here. So let's go ahead and find it. Well, if sine of y is equal to x, we know that sine squared y plus cosine squared y is equal to 1. And then from here, we can isolate cosine squared as 1 minus sine squared. And finally, we can write the cosine as square root of 1 minus sine squared. Let's go ahead and do that. And of course, there are two values, but I'm just going to ignore that. So this is the answer. But what is sine squared y? Well, x is equal to sine y, so sine y is equal to x. Replace it with x, and you're going to get the same answer. And of course, there is a constant that you can, like, plus minus sine, because arc sine x and arc cosine x add up to pi over 2, so on and so forth. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.